You know, there was that time that the disciples denied Jesus, and it raises the question of what happens when we fail Jesus. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 35, we read these words. Peter said to Jesus, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. There's a little girl by the name of Lucy that went to church for her first Holy Week service when she was nine years old. She was the one of the children of the pastor, and she had uh, only her older brother, her 12-year-old brother, to supervise her during the tenebrous service. At the end of each of the passages of Scripture telling the Passion story, the reader would extinguish a candle and then walk away into the congregation, disappearing, kind of like one of the friends and disciples who fled after Jesus' arrest. When the last reader, which was Lucy's mom, spoke the words, he breathed his last, and then she carried that last candle, the Christ candle, out into the chancel and back into that, the back hallway, the congregation would then depart in silence. And when the choir came down quietly through the same doorway from that chancel, Lucy followed and she was crying and she found her way in the near darkness into her mother's arms. And choking back her sobs, she whispered, Mommy, there are lots of sad things in the Bible, but this is the saddest. When we move too quickly, too readily from the excitement of the Palm Sunday parade to the joy of the Easter morning celebration, we miss that emotional and commingled grief and regret that was felt by the disciples as they watched their teacher and their friend marched off by the Roman soldiers to be tried by the religious authorities. We miss the moments of helplessness and fear that they experienced while hiding in the upper room. We miss the ways that the truth hurts. After supper on that last night together, Jesus told the disciples that they would desert him not at some unpredictable time in the future, but that very night. And Peter was the one that spoke up and claimed, even if everyone else runs away, that he would never desert Jesus. Imagine the rustling of the voices going up and down the table, all of them saying, Jesus, not me, I would never. This is part of our faith story. We do what we do not want to do. We deny what matters most to us. We behave in ways that do not represent what we believe. And all the time, we say right along with Peter, even though I must die with you, Lord, I will not deny you. This is part of our story, and it's true and the truth hurts. It's not surprising then that when we fill our sanctuaries with the shouts of hosannas and alleluias, but see less of a turnout for the services in between on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, when we avoid the pain, we also avoid the intimacy of those final conversations with Jesus, the passionate expressions of love and loyalty and the understated response from the one who knows what will happen. Jesus does not sugarcoat it for them. He trusts them with the truth, the full truth. If you were to ask Lucy, who is now in her 20s, she would tell you that Tenebrae is her favorite service of the church year. 
Whether she participates as a reader or sits out in the congregation, the stories of the passion move her and have formed her faith. We will all make mistakes and fall short despite our best intentions to do otherwise. (laughs) The good news is Jesus knows that. Yet he still loves us. And this is the truth that brings healing to our souls. And it is good news. Amen.